It should be Echo Kids. Yes. Your dog is like you were saying that. I think it's a good This is your... <laughs> Yesterday. <laughs> Call this uh, governing board meeting to order on Tuesday, March 19th, uh, 20, let's see, the governing board, uh, Tuesday, 2024 at 5 p.m. in the Santa Cruz Valley Unified School District uh, Governing Boardroom District Office, Vice President, Mr. Latino, Puerto Rico, Arizona. Will everybody please stand for the pitch? And Mr. Verdugo. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, Ms. Lourdes Vasquez. Present. Uh, Mrs. Susan Fobian. Present. Mr. Joel Kramer. Absent. Mr. Rene Ramirez. Here. Mr. Brad Beach. Here. We have a forum. Moving on to subject B, adoption of agenda. Uh, motion to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. 
A motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say nay. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Subject C, call to the public. No call to the public. All right. Moving we'll along. Uh, two presentations. Subject A, Ruby Box. Uh, X, Ruby High School Cheer, L2 Shoot. Uh, Mr. David Verdugo, Mr. Jonathan. I'd like to invite Mr. Manning up. Uh, we are very fortunate to recognize a lot of our, our students for their accomplishments. Um, all great in uh, our district. So let's, I'll turn over to Mr. Pandy. Good afternoon, Mr. President, members of the Board of District Administration, and honored guests. Um, today is a, a wonderful day. As you know, this is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, as community outreach coordinator, and that is to recognize excellence. And we have a lot of excellent things happening in our district. So I'm going to highlight four today to you. Uh, the first two are individuals. And for the past three or four years, just to give you a little background, um, Ted Holler, the Elk Hoopshoe uh, chairperson in Green Valley, uh, has reached out to our district. And every year we answer. Every year, we do some, some great things. Many of our students, if not most of our students, move on to the uh, from the Continental, which I believe is a local or district, and then they move to the Tucson. They shoot there. If they win there, they move to Phoenix. If they win there, they move to Vegas. And if they move there, luckily this year, we do have one person that is going to be going to Chicago in late April uh, for the national championship. So without further ado, I'm going to call Anakin. Can you come on up here real quick? And you like to bring her on. Anakin here is, uh, where did you, is that what you want? You want to show them real quick? Show them and then show the board. Uh, I'm going to read a little something uh, about Anakin. Uh, Anakin is dedicated and puts a lot of effort into practice, and it shows. He made over, and remember this percentage because I want you to look around when you have an opportunity, look up uh, basketball, basketball player percentages. Um, he made over 77% of his shots, demonstrating great skill and determination. After coming in second place last year, Anakin set his sights on winning first place this year, and he did not disappoint. He had to take first place at the local level, the district level, the state level. He won the state championship. He is the number one shooter in his age division um, on the entire state. Uh, after winning the local competition, Anakin said, Mom, my new goal is to make it to Las Vegas. We're going to Las Vegas. He did just that winning the state contest again and making all the way to the regional competition in Vegas. We can't be more proud of him. He's turning it into an incredible young man. And this comes from both parent and from site administrator. Uh, he's turning into an incredible young man who knows exactly what he wants and he'll do whatever it takes to get it. So there's a lot of drive and a lot of perseverance in this gentleman. So ladies and gentlemen, I present to you state champion, Elks, Anakin Machado. <laughs> Or Anakin, do you want to say anything? Exciting for you. Keep on being number one. So, oh yeah! Thank you. Congratulations. Oh, now that's. Awesome, on awesome, Anakin. I remember you take me back a long, long way, okay? My son used to uh, do that too, and he went really, really far. Probably not as far as you, okay? But he went really, really far. So keep it up, give up the good work. People. Congratulations, and never, never give up your dream, okay? That's fantastic. Congratulations, me. And nurse? Yeah, as a, as a former coach at Rio Rico High School in basketball, and coach. I tell you something, that is something else, that percentage of yours. That's kind of just really something that's an amazing percentage for somebody, and especially your age. Wow, it's shooting 77%. So we really look forward to you being a hawk and shooting that ball for us on the home court over here in the future. So thank you for representing our, our community with pride. Thank you so much and good job. Awesome. Mr. Verdugo? Thank you. Congratulations. 
Anna and I used to have a, a friend of mine named Jeff Madrin, and uh, he used to uh, he was built like uh, olive oil from uh, what was it? Popeye. Popeye. Yeah, real skinny, sort of six one. Not the not the biggest or tallest uh, basketball player, but after every practice, uh, he would go two hours of practice, and he said, "Well, Jeff, how'd you go D one when you're only like six one? You can't really run that fast, jump that high." And he goes, "It's because he could shoot from the outside." And every day after practice, he would uh, stay after practice at the three-point line and shoot 100 more uh, three-pointers. So I know uh, you probably shot hundreds of free throws. Uh, where were you practicing at? San Caetano. San Caetano? Okay. <laughs> Just keep on practicing, putting in that uh, uh, extra work, and uh, hopefully you bring back that national title. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you. The next young lady, um, uh, pretty pretty special young lady as well. Um, she, I, I had, I've had the opportunity for the past three years to coach her at uh, Quattro Windy Middle School. She uh, has done very well, despite the fact that I'm coaching her. <laughs> so, uh, real happy. Gabby, can you come on up? She was my starting point guard. She had another girl, not only this year, but last year as a seventh grader as well. Um, she has a lot of talent. In fact, she was a manager this year for our basketball team, for the boys' basketball and uh, we have a little fun sometimes. And one of those times, uh, we put everyone inside the key, and it's oh. the 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 box or the you know the paint the lane the key. It's it's the rectangle, mm -hmm. and we have a little uh, game. It's called knockout. That's very similar to the free throw, where you try to get everyone out and you dribble your ball, and not double dribble and not travel while you're knocking the other people's basketballs outside of the area, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, Gabby, did you win? Or I know you came in at least second, but yeah, she came in second out of every single boy. And, and sometimes, yeah, our school and Calabasas. So she not only can shoot free throws, but she can also dribble like the son of a gun. So <laughs> I'm going to read a little write up here. Uh, Buckingham Middle School is very proud of Gabby's accomplishments. She has represented our school and community with excellence, pride, and high levels of character. Gabby is being recognized for her accomplishments in the Elks Hoop Shoot competition. She has now won district, state, I mean district, regional, state, um, and then she went to Las Vegas. And how'd you do there? I won. Oh, yeah, she won. <laughs> um, I think one of her competitions, I think you had made 22 out of 25. It was 19 to 19 tied. But before oh, wait, that, yeah, it was 22. Before that, 22 out of 25, and that's from the official free throw line. And then at the uh, the the regionals in Vegas, what 19 out of 25, and then they went into overtime. And I think the first overtime they both made three, and the second time overtime she made five, and then the other young lady shot and she missed the first one. So at that point, we knew she was the champion. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and continue. Uh, she's now slated to attend the National Hoop Shoe Competition in Chicago to take place on Saturday, April 20th. The competition will take place at the home of the WNBA champion Chicago Sky and DePaul Blue Demons. It is not often that our students reach the national level in competition, and our very own Gabriela Gonzalez has certainly given herself the opportunity to compete and be recognized at a national level. level. We are proud of Gabby, and she is certainly a winner in our, in our, winner in our books of her outstanding accomplishments this far, thus far. So Gabi, congratulations. And here's what I've heard is if she actually wins, and correct me if I'm wrong, her name, I think will go in the Naismith Hall of Fame. It will be etched in the Naismith Hall of Fame. Nice. Um, so that pretty much an accomplishment. I'm gonna turn it over to the board and Gabi, but let's give it up to Gabi. You have anything? Gabriel? <laughs> okay. Congratulations. That is awesome. And I, I just wish you the best in Chicago. 
you. Congratulations, Mita. Awesome job. Keep it up again. Okay. You know, you know that uh, practice makes perfect. Yeah. You know what it takes. And so congratulations. And we're all behind you when you're over in, in, in Chicago. And, you know, bring back the good one. <laughs> all righty. You know, good job, Mita. Congratulations. Mears. Hey there, Gabby. It was a great job. Awesome. Thank you. Another great, another big winner. Uh, I have a story started like Mr. Beach's. It's not about our colleague, uh, but it's about uh, ending a practice one time at Rio Rico High School. And we left the gym into the main gym because the girls were using the main gym for their practice that day. You know where that is. So we came out, we went through the double doors and and we stopped or I stopped my whole team because I saw a girl named Sarah Felix shooting threes. And she was just draining one after another after another. And, you know, the, the girls were swinging the ball around for her. And she just kept hitting them. And so it got the attention of, of the guys. And they're like, wow, oh, she can shoot the ball. And one kid said, shoot like you mean or don't shoot at all. And I was thinking about what Mr. Beach said, because people stay after practice and shoot hundreds and hundreds of shots afterward. And those are the ones that get the attention of the coach. They take a look and say, wow, after a hard practice, and there this person is staying afterward and putting in extra time. So you must have done that to, to get to the level where you are. So now you, you can shoot to be the next Caitlin Clark, you know, from Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> you know who sure she is, I'm sure. So at any rate, congratulations. Great job. And thank you again for another person for com representing our community with pride. <laughs> Like Mr. Ramirez said, I, I'm sure you put in a, a ton of work to get where you're at. So, uh, congratulations and a uh, way to represent our, our district, our community. We wish you the best of luck in Chicago. And I believe our high school point guard has graduated, correct? Yeah, so uh, you might be the first freshman maybe to a uh, varsity spot. John, John, what do you got? Uh, she's there? She'll, she'll make it then. Yeah. All right. Well, we're looking forward to the high school level yeah, next year. Congratulations. Congratulations. From uh, individual now to team. A lot, a lot of uh, folks here to be proud of, very proud of. Um, as a coach, um, your, your cheer team has the ability to make a difference in the game um, with their spirit and so forth. That's why they call it a home court advantage. That's one aspect of a home court advantage. And our uh, cheer team certainly did that. Um, the season itself was challenging at first, but at the end was great. Receiving second place back to back in state is incredible, meaning that they're heading in the right path to success. And this is from the coach. Also want to congratulate our partner stunt division that took third place in state. The Rio Rico cheer program has proven its ability to remain triumphant and will continue on the verge of achievement. So with that, I'd like to invite the coach up as well as the entire team to come on up. And the board might have a few questions for you. So coach, I want to turn it over to you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm really proud of, of, you know, the progress that I've seen from last year and this year. Uh, last last year, our skill was very basic, but this year we overcame and made it a lot more better than last year, which I'm really proud of. Mo majority of my girls are new to, to cheer and com basically competing against new, sorry, all-star cheerleaders up from Phoenix and cheer teams that have been in for 35 years, for example, against NHS. Their cheer team has been there for years and years. And us being from last year and getting everything, getting together and competing against them and being right behind them is a huge success. Knowing that, like how I said in, in, the, little, in, a prayer, in the paragraph, that, you know, we're in the right path right now. And I'm I mean, if I wouldn't, you know, all of them, that's all of them, their dedication. And I also want to thank for the parents. Parents also, without the parents, um, it wouldn't be a thing. So, you know, I hopefully, um, how much I appreciate the parents and the students.
girls want to say anything? You're good? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. Well done. You know, you really did a big turnaround, and that's great. And thank you for acknowledging the parents. Because, yeah, they really do have a hand in it. So they're all doing really well, and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Ah, congratulations. You know, I love your face. I remember. Yeah, they're my yeah. students. They were my students in sixth grade, so I remember most, of, you know, all of them that were mine. But congratulations! I know how hard they have worked, and it shows a lot. Okay, like when we had our first, uh, you know, like welcome back to school and whatever, they had this skit, you know, with the uh, with the Mario Brothers, and oh my God, that stuff was awesome i mean all of those little skits that they had at the beginning of the year and all that you could tell huh it's a dance team it was the other one and that was them too but they did this other thing too Half of my cheerleaders were, were in the, in the yeah because i know that i saw some of them in there that's why i thought it was together or whatever but anyway but you could tell right away you know that that their skills were so much better that they're you know that you know the the routines that they're doing and everything and you guys are awesome okay you're awesome i'm so proud of you guys you know continue your hard work and you know it pays off you know it's really really it's it's a team it's the all the uh, everything together right that comes and makes what you guys are doing you know so much better so congratulations guys i love you guys <laughs> thank you thank you for your leadership your focus and your zeal because without that leadership it's going to have gotten they wouldn't want to have gotten this done so but of course your spirit too. All you guys put that spirit together to once again represent our community with that good old fashioned hawk pride. So, how many of you are seniors? Wow. So, yeah, we have Do you have three seniors right now, but majority of them are up in GCU right now. Well, one is GCU and one's got sick today. So. Sophomores and freshmen. Wow. So, wow. so see, you've got quite the future. We expect you guys to. to pull off the same performance next year, if not better. Not so, but thank you again for representing us with pride, with that hot pride. Thank you. Yeah, coach, I, I can relate because I know a lot of the programs in Phoenix and Tucson, they start when they're like in third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. They got tons of gyms around there. I think we only have one. Yeah. So I, I know what you're going up against when you go up uh, to these big schools in Phoenix and Tucson, that type of competition and the amount of work it takes to even place at a tournament uh, at that level. And uh, how many of you girls were, and guys are, were injured this year? <laughs> yeah. I hear all the dance, cheer, all that uh, is one of the most uh, injury-prone sports there is out there. Yeah. So you guys put in the work, the, the sweat, uh, the time, countless hours in the gym to get where you are. So. We uh, congratulate you and hope for uh, first place next year. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Can I say one more? Yeah, thing? go for it. I just wanted to say I wanted to give the boys okay, a shout out because yeah. it's really hard okay, for the yes. boys to be, you know, in that type of, of, of situation, you know, that type of, of team. That, you know, they usually give them a hard time, you know, because, oh, you want to play with the girls. But they don't know <laughs> the hard work that these girls, okay, and these, these yeah. guys have to perform in order to be where they're at. So kudos, guys. Yeah, my respect, my respect to, to them, too. Absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of respect for you guys. Thank and, you so much for what you do. And thank you, parents, because yes. I know the sacrifices you have to do. A lot of money, gas money, food money, oh, yeah. uh, support, uniforms, etc. cetera. So uh, coach, parents, uh, big shout out to you guys too. You guys put in the effort and it's definitely showing. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Steve, while they're departing, while they're moving, I think there was a parent that wanted to say something. Parent? Is there a parent that wants to say something? We had their hand up. Don't be shy. Well, one of the things, um, as uh, I think Mr. Lopez went out to get the box dance team. Um, and this is the truth, by the way, about when when Carlos first came on as the uh, Hawks dance coach, 
and I saw what he did during the first year, I made a prediction that they were going to win state. We're going to get there in a little bit real quick, but I also wanted to say something about the cheer team. If they can stay together and they can continue um, on the path that the coach mentioned, then I'm predicting that that uh, we'll have another state champion uh, in our cheer team in the future. Um, so with that, like I said, as you were walking in, I, I made a prediction about three or four. Whenever you first started, Carlos, and I made a prediction when I saw what you were capable of and what you brought out in your dance team. And that prediction was that you were going to win state. And it wasn't going to take too long. And man, did you uh, did you uh, prove me right? I'm not right that often, but I was right there. <laughs> I've seen them many times. And every time I see them, they get better and better and better. If you have not had the opportunity to see them, find out where they are performing. Because that's another thing about this Hawks dance team is when we have stuff to bus, when we do anything where we want to help others in this community who are in need. And I talked to Carlos. Um, Carlos makes it happen, I think, every single time. Um, so they're not just out there doing great things uh, during during their dance performance. They're out there truly making a difference in the community. Um, and that starts uh, from the leadership. So my hat's off to you and all the, the dancers. So I'm going to say a little, a few things here now. The Hawks dance team, a dance team that believes in discipline, kindness, like I just mentioned, Structure and commitment has brought home nearly a perfect score of 290 out of 300, placing last in 2023 to becoming state champions in 2024. This team rose from the ashes and exceeded all expectations. Thank you, Rio Rico High School community. With unconditional support, we hope to continue to make you proud. The Hawks dance team is now officially the 2024 Division one through four varsity hip hop small Arizona state champions. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, everybody, for having us. Um, first and foremost, uh, thank you to the dancers. Uh, you know, they work hard. I may see them every day, probably even on the weekends. Maybe their families, I see them more than their families do, but I love them just as much. Um, they do an amazing job. Hopefully, you guys can see they are doing an amazing job. But we also want to thank uh, our families, the community, and all our support from our district and admin. Um, and uh, just thanking you guys for always uh, supporting us and also having uh, space in your hearts for letting us dance here in the community, which is a big thank you for from you guys. So, guys, what do you usually say? Thank you. Any other girls want to speak? Guys, also? Sure, Val. Um, I just wanted to say I'm extremely proud of the whole team, every individual here, as well as my coaches. We wouldn't be here without anyone. And I want to say thank you to our community as well, because you guys have given us the support so that we can be here right now and get our state championship. Um, we have faced many obstacles, but we, together as a community, as a team, we have come together and worked hard through dedication to win this. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Tobin. The hard work is evident yeah. when we see you guys, and it just always gives me great joy. So truly congratulations. It's a hard-earned victory, and I know it'll just keep going. Thank you. <laughs> Again, so congratulations. You guys are awesome. I was talking about you before you guys were even in here. Okay. We could tell, okay, the difference, you know, since the beginning of the year with the skits that you guys did and all of that. Like, you guys are amazing. And I know that it takes so much work to do that. So much dedication, so much love for the sport. Okay. Because again, it is a sport. Kudos to the boy that's right there, okay? I'm glad you only have one boy. Congratulations, Amit. I hope that you get more because it's it's it, it makes a big difference, okay, with the more people you have. But you guys are doing awesome. Congratulations, 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 guys. So proud of you. So proud of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ramirez. 
Well, young lady that one who came to speak to us, what is your name? My name is Is Isabella Cabrera. Isabella. Isabella. <laughs> well, Isabella, I kind of thank you for being brave enough to step up to the mic. You know, most people want to shy away from that kind of thing. Even the adults, they don't want to talk. So I think it's really cool you stepped up there. I thought maybe you'd even bust a move on the way up here. <laughs> But uh, you guys did a great job, and you have to be very athletic to do what you do. And it's funny, I've, I've seen West Side Story so many times, but just recently, within the last few days, I saw it. And uh, it just reminded me of that thing, that, the kinds of things that Russ Tamblin did. That he was very athletic, and he would really do make some, make some moves that you guys would just love. If you've never seen it, I'd strongly recommend it. You watch that. You guys would love it since you love dancing so much. Coach, thank you for your leadership and dedication. We appreciate it here at Rio Rico. Thank you guys for all that you did. With the big thank yous too. <laughs> you guys are cute, but uh, awesome job. Thank you. I know they're well uh, choreographed because they all say thank you at the same time. <laughs> Talk about being trained correctly. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Now, watching them uh, develop from years back, uh, you know, when they first performed, I said, man, they're, they're pretty good. Then I watched them at a football game. Man, that was a rock-solid performance. And then I watched them at one of the big basketball games in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. and they downloaded it to YouTube, and I was like, dang, they're on fire. I knew we were going to be contenders uh, this year. You guys put in the hard work. It showed. And what, what's unique about team sports if one individual, one of you messes up by, I don't catch it, but the judges do. Her foot was misplaced. They didn't put it at the same level. Deduction, deduction, deduction. Mm -hmm. So to keep that choreographed, I don't know how you do it. Probably count, countless hours on uh, doing the routines, but it's definitely uh, paid off. And congratulations. No one can take away that state championship. Coach, congratulations to your hard work and also parents. Appreciate your, your support. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And that concludes our presentations. Thank you, John. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Fanning. Thank you, Mr. Fanning. Yep. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Parents, if you want to leave now, now is the time. <laughs> want to stick around for the construction. Oh, no, no, yeah, construction. All that neat stuff. Thank you, parents, for all you guys do. Yep. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Cheerleading stuff. I watched a Netflix show. Mm -hmm. on oh, that's yeah, so much yeah. So my my daughter's college the the, the one in, in the country in all divisions. Oh, none of them. Wow. I didn't know they had like these stunt competitions. Oh yeah, they do. They beat the number two ranked team, which is Missy. Oh, yeah. uh, I love college. Them. So they're the three times oh, yeah. oh, yeah. champions. College is this? Alma that? College in Michigan. Alma. Who's this? Thing? Trophy. Oh, that's uh. Okay, that that uh, the district office one oh. that, that I that I won. Yeah, that's it. Wow. Right. Yes. Oh, I'll talk to you later. Oh, cool. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to take a picture, but I said hit me in time. Oh, you know, you're supposed to hand it over. Uh huh. Yeah. Nice trophy. Very nice trophy. Very nice. Mm -hmm. During my super trip. Yes. <laughs> All righty, let's move along. Uh, subject B, construction update. Uh, Mr. David Verdugo. Thank you. Uh, today we have a gentleman who is here to uh, provide monthly uh, get the moving up for the meeting this month. Uh, and, uh, I think you're this month. Thank you, gentlemen. Mr. Verdugo, um, Mr. President. Members of the board, thank you for having me for the construction update. Um, right away here. So um, we are down to our final two projects as we've been uh, highlighting the last couple months. Uh, the first project we'll talk about is the uh, CTE field house down by the football field. This project uh, continues to uh, roll along in construction. The photographs you're going to see tonight we had to submit before spring break, so they're um, 
about a week and a half old. So we are, have made progress uh, since even these photographs were made. One more slide. Uh, so the photographs you see were right before the concrete slab on, on grave was poured. So you can see the vapor barrier there, um, all the plumbing penetrations coming up through there, the tape, et cetera. Um, if you look out there today, you will see that that slab has been completely poured and they are starting uh, to erect the perimeter walls of the, of the building. Uh, those walls are metal studs. And the steel delivery was made today. We have eight columns within the center of the building. The steel is on site, and uh, we're hoping by the end of the week to have those steel columns erected and upright. And then next coming on board will be the wood trusses, and those will sit on top of the walls that are being erected right now. And then after the wood trusses are set, then they'll, they'll construct the, remain, the remainder of the parapet which is the, the, the rest of the height of the walls that will then screen um, the mechanical units from view. So moving right along, they're looking forward to um, hopefully a week of, a rest of the week of good weather so we can get these things up and roof on this building so we can continue to roll forward. Uh, just a few more pictures of that slab on gray getting prepped um, before the concrete pour. And then the next project we'll want to talk about is the pool facility. This one, uh, they have been doing a lot of work on the hardscape and the pool decking. So uh, we have lots of, um, it's not just a flat rectangular slab with, with rectangular joints everywhere. We kind of have circles and swirls. So it's very intricate in doing all the form work and then pouring concrete in different, uh, in different batches so that you can have one formed and then form the next, form the next. So the splash pad is all prepped. Um, so the next few days they will be continuing those slab pours and then they're gonna roll right into um, the cool decking and the uh, acrylic coatings at the splash pads. Um, fencing is underway. I guess you can roll to the pictures. I, I'll start talking about that. Uh, interior of the pool, um, I think this was before the tile got set. So now where those gray lines are, there's there's the blue tiles on the bottom of the, the pool where that'll define the lane. Um, the, the interior of the pool is ready for its white um, acrylic stucco coat that'll be the finish um, before they start putting the water in. Here you can see some of the form work that was up about a week and a half ago while they're forming um, those concrete sidewalks and the fence posts there. Um, there's some freshly poured concrete in that photograph. And Brian told me he put some light picture, light pole pictures in there because one of you had asked about that last time. Um, but yes, this is more fencing and uh, form work for the concrete, more fencing. And yeah, so there were no light pole pictures if they were, they were very small. But I saw them all today. They're, they're all around the perimeter of the pool decking um, for, that, for that lit area. Um, they are along. Um, we are targeting uh, kind of an end of April completion on this. Um, they're just working through the concrete, working through those finishes, and we are waiting for the pool equipment itself to be delivered. Once that is delivered and the pumps and everything are in place, then they can start the filling of the pool. So over the next four or five weeks, there's probably going to be a lot of, of final touches coming together um, on that project. And that is the end of my official update. Any questions? Moving. So we are hearing there's going to be more rain coming. Is that going to be an issue with cement pouring and things like that? Um, at this point, they have a lot of it down. They're, they have a, a pour scheduled for tomorrow morning. So I think they're going to get a lot of it down tomorrow. Um, I didn't ask them specifically how many more pours they had. Um, I'm happy to find that out. I can send it to Mr. Verdugo. He can share it to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for the up, update. It's amazing. I, I would really like to see the pool, you know, with the blues and, on, you know, and the whites and all. Because I was going to ask last time, but I said I'm going to be quiet because I think it's not complete. So I think that there's other things that are happening, you know. And, uh, but um, so it's going to be white and then just the blue, the blue lines. Oh, my God, it's beautiful. Everything looks really, really good. Thank you very much for the update. It's very, very, you know. I mean, it's, I mean, self-explanatory. You can see everything you can, you know, it's, 
I have to go down there. Yeah. I'm gonna have to, I have to go walk around I'll down there. Okay. Yes, we need to go down there because not like the yellow part right here, you know, where that is already all concrete and some of the, the poles are gonna be standing up and stuff. And I I would really love to see all of that right now. So yeah, if, if we want to arrange a, a tour for y'all, we can work with Miss uh, Miss Lunderville and get you all suited up with um, hard hat and vest. <laughs> Very strict on safety down there. Last time I went down, I forgot my hard hat. Thing. Oh my goodness. <laughs> But it looks amazing. Thank you very much for the update. It's, it's coming along really good. And the good thing that I'm seeing is that it it seems like we're gonna hit the the dates that we would, that we wanted. And I think that's the important part that we want. You know that yeah. uh, that everything. I mean, even though the weather is a factor, whatever, but you guys have factored all of that in to make sure that we are done when the time is. You know, right. So thank you very much. Appreciate it, Mr. Ramirez. The comments. Thank you so much. Yeah, Jennifer, from last month to this month, wow, wow. what a difference. You guys have been putting in the hard work. Yeah, well, I'm not doing the hard work. We're just in the background. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the one that's leading them, so yeah. Right. <laughs> but, uh, everything's looking good. I think now we just got to get our swim team. In May, right? Yeah. In May. In May. Yeah. So thank you for all your hard work, your team's hard work, and everybody involved in these projects, uh, including our district staff up here. Yes. Yeah. So appreciate it. Thank you. I will pass that along to the team. All right. Thank, thank you, you. Right. so much. Okay. Subject C: New grading system implementation. Megan Padilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You made that. Uh, I don't want to show anybody that. Yeah. Bring this through. I know there's a significant change within our district. We had an element in the middle now. All the way through 12th grade. So. I wanted to, to wait until we had some, some really good data to share, just some update and uh, some more interrupt me. Thank you. Good evening, President, Governing Board Member, Administration, all my colleagues, and everyone. Um, I'm Meg Padilla, I'm the TLA coordinator, and I also serve on our standards based task force. So, I'm representing TLA and the task force this evening. I've been a member of our task force since it started when we saw the timeline of that in the packet. And we started as a K-12 task force. We're down to a 9-12 task force for this year. So we're still in tact. We have our final meeting on Thursday. So you're going to see a slide that says either updates or recommendations and something saying pending or current. And that's because we just, here's that over with. We're 75% through. So we say, All right, so the agenda for uh, what I'd like to share is just an overview. You know, what is it? Kind of a review so that we're all on the same page. And then updates from this school year so far. So just a review of how standards are defined by the Arizona Department of Education. I like to include this when we talk about standards-based learning and reporting. So do we know what we mean when we say standards? Because we don't mean like standardized testing is what we're grading on. We're talking about our standard. And so those are the knowledge, understanding, and skills need, that need to be effectively taught and learned for all students to be successful, no matter what their pathway is. As you can see there, college-bound, um, workplace, or military service. In our district, how we define standards-based learning and reporting, and the definitions for us, they are important. And these were established by our task force when we started. I wanted to do that because in districts that we work with and partner with and call and have questions, we might call this SBG, standards-based grading. Unless we want to make it more than just grading, really about making sure we're clear on what students are learning and then clear on how we report that learning. We still, and still this year, right, it's what's my grade, but we want to be, you know, how can I learn more? You know, I'm struggling with this concept. So we're hoping that by changing the language, we start to change that mindset as well. 
So our definition is it's a system for supporting learning through practices that make proficiency against the academic standards and priority academic outcome. And we transitioned to standards-based systems so that we are communicating student learning according to those academic standards. These are some of these are the three principles that drive this system. The first one is students have multiple opportunities to demonstrate learning. This is where you know a student isn't going to just take one assessment and oh yeah I understand that standard. There should be multiple opportunities, sometimes different types of opportunities, and sometimes that's where reassessment or retake would come into play. Second principle: instruction, feedback, and assessment are all aligned to support students learning the standards. That's essentially the back end work that all of us, the teachers, the TLA, that we put in time to create standard proficiency skills, which is a four, three, two, one, we look for a particular standard, aligning assessments to standards. So that work is a lot of work. We actually started some of that work. When two of you were uh, in the classroom, we started looking at our standards in a deeper way and aligning our assessments to them. So. Even though our task force started in 2020, some of the foundational work started years before that. And then the third principle is that grades reflect the more recent evidence of learning that a student, a student provides independently. Our K-2 standards have some exceptions because some K-2 standards say, with adult support, the student does this in writing. But the majority of standards in third grade and above, students are expected to do those independently. So we want to make sure that our grades are showing what can the student do independently. Now, what does the parent know? What does their friend know? So we want the grade to make sure like this is the student's uh, level of learning. And then our timeline, just this is really the timeline of the task force. As I mentioned, some foundational work started back, it was I think school year 17, 18, when we started doing some deeper work with our standards and our assessments. And then our task force started in 2020. That was our K-8 task force. You guys have seen this timeline, I think each of these years when I've provided an update. So we're obviously in that last year, the last column, which is hard to believe because I remember thinking, What's it going to be like there? And now I think the time just went by really fast and um, we've learned so much, but we still have so much to learn. So I guess when you know more, you realize how much you still don't know. Uh, so anyway, this year we're obviously still in action and we are proposing, we are offering the standards-based task force again, one more, at least one more year for the high school, just because there's more at stake when you shift something, there's just dip, there are differences with high school. And so that has been approved to be offered as one of our 301 options. And we have people signing up for that again next year. So what did that task force look like this year? We ended up breaking into three teams. And again, this is our high school team. We broke up into a solution seeking team. So as we as you implement something for the first time, there's always going to be problems that arise and we need people to think through those problems, right? The practitioners who are doing this. We had a grading system in place for over a hundred years. So we went into this figuring, we're gonna have some things we need to figure out. So the solution seeking team, when we meet together, they identify areas, you know, where do we need some improvement? What solutions can we provide? And I'll elaborate on what we've done. We had a second team looking at our standard proficiency level aggregation. And so they researched aggregation methods to make a recommendation. And I'll talk about what that means too. And then finally, we had our third team and they looked at awards and recognitions because we wanna make sure just as we did tonight, uh, the amazing recognitions, you know, what do those look like academically when we change our reporting system? Maybe they look the same, but it's worth examining it to say, you know, should we make an update? And so that to be the awards and recognitions. So the updates from this year. So the task force, we researched the updated standard aggregation methods that are available in our Synergy Gradebook. We surveyed teachers, and that was to determine if a replacement of power law is needed. I think at least two of you have mentioned power law to me. That was a method that we used last year in K-8. Was fine. But in 9-12, we started to see work 
with it. And Synergy added new aggregation methods in September that were too late for us to implement. We didn't want to change it in the like middle of a grading period. Could you repeat that again? Oh yeah. So with the Synergy gradebook, they added more ag standard aggregation methods to their gradebook in September. And so we started to research what are these new methods and we presented those to teachers. So I'm going to kind of talk about that when we get to the recommendations. I want to change it because. Oh, in the middle, because we had already done like grade checks. We had already, we were too far into the year when the new aggregation methods were released through Synergy Gradebook. And I had, and I consulted too with some of our district administration on that. We said, do we want to make a change? And it's also not advised by Synergy because it, it can cause a lot of issues if you then go back and start to change public. So we also provided support for utilizing student learning trackers and proficiency skills with students. So we had a lot of our teachers start to use learning trackers because that's one of the positive things about standards-based learning reporting is students track their learning. They should know, what am I learning? Where am I at? What do I need to do to close the gap? And so we had teachers start to share in different breakout work, like workshops that we did for PD. And they would share their uh, trackers that they were using with students, what worked, what didn't, and those evolved over the year too. They also uh, shared, you know, here's how I'm using proficiency skills with students so that students are reviewing those skills and know exactly, you know, this is what I need to do to show a three, this is what I need to do to show a four. And then we're currently uh, piloting the new Synergy gradebook. So Synergy has a new gradebook. They've had a higher demand uh, from districts using standards-based reporting. And so we said, yeah, let's, let's give it a try. So we had uh, we offered this to any teacher who wanted to try it. We have 30, over 30 teachers trying the new gradebook. So, and we're getting feedback from them on what does that look like. And then our task force is currently examining the reassessment guidance to see where, do, where does that need to be tightened up or to be clear. And then the awards group is examining, um, looking at different cum laude system. So cum laude, summa cum laude, magna cum laude, and would that be a type of recognition system that we might want to move to? That would not apply to any cohorts currently in high school. So we're just exploring that and it would be something that we might say we phase in with a group that goes up to high school either next year or the year after that. Um, can I just ask a question? I'm sorry. The 30 plus teachers, are they all high school or are they? That's K-12, great question. That's the, okay, so then. Every school too. Has every school is trying it in a different, yeah. thank you. All right, so that's what we've been working on. Here are our recommendations that we have right now. We are recommending that next school year, school year 24-25, we update our standard aggregation method from power law to decayed average. So decayed average, it's a formula that progressively assigns decreasing weights to older learning evidence, which then makes newer learning evidence count more. And that one was added late September by Synergy, and we put out a as a task force, we went to the high school teachers and we said, here's the different methods we can use now. We gave them information on it and then sent out a survey and overwhelmingly, they preferred decaying average when we showed them different scenarios. So we feel um, pretty confident in that, in using that and updating that aggregation method. We also are recommending that we use Synergy's new gradebook as our default gradebook next year. But the legacy gradebook, our current one, it'll still be available with a click of a button. The teachers can see their data in either one. So they don't have to enter grades twice, but by default, they'd see the new gradebook and we would of course train them on it and also have on-demand opportunities. Um, but if someone said, you know, I can't handle that or I just need to do this thing real quick and I know how to do it in the legacy gradebook, they can quickly switch and their data is right there, no problem. So uh, one of the positives is that the new gradebook is the one that Synergy is going to now send updates to. Starting next year, they're not going to be updating their legacy gradebook. So if there's a bug or something, they're not patching the legacy gradebook. And does the old uh, and does the old uh, legacy have the decaying averages? Yeah, I don't know. we can use decaying average in either one. 
And then pending, uh, one of our topics for our task force meeting on Thursday is uh, just looking final touches on reassessment guidance and the recognition and awards. We're going to look at that one last time. All of this information, I have a meeting uh, the, with some members of the task force and with the high school administration. We have a meeting the first week of April to go through our recommendations as well so that you know, we, we don't just go to the administration and say, this is what we're gonna do. It is, it's a conversation. And then some of that too, I would assume would also go into the leadership academy, especially the awards reassessment get them like to have a recommendation and then work, you know, the finer details out together in a larger team. Some ongoing supports I just wanted to make you all aware of is we've had professional development opportunities throughout the school year. We've held several workshops that we co-facilitated with the high school. We also had one uh, with K-8, where there's different breakout sessions with topics related to standards-based learning and reporting, but also personalized learning, and teachers can select their sessions that they go to. The high school sessions in particular, those topics were driven by surveying the teachers for what is it that you have questions about, what do you need? And then we would form different breakout sessions based on that. And we did our best to also find teachers who could lead that or co or co facilitate that. So big shout out to the high school for you know a lot of that PD time this year went into doing these types of workshops. And then we also did grade book trainings during PD, but we do those on demand, phone call, email, run up to the school. Um, I, th I think the teachers and principals know we're always there for support, not just on a scheduled PD day. And then we now currently uh, have eight professional learning modules hosted on our website. We had seven of them already before we implemented at the high school, but we added an eighth one in the fall called Designing Standards-Based Lessons, Planning with the End in Mind. And uh, Judy and I, Judy Kennedy and I facilitated that uh, with the new teachers at the high school in the fall. And so the learning modules that we have on our TLA website, we deliver those in person, but they're also on demand on our website. So it's really nice to have that flexibility. And then finally, that last bullet, the TLA, uh, TLA Judy, Kennedy, Alex, Palumbo, and myself, we're on campuses, um, each campus once a week, and we're at the high school twice a week. So we're always there to, you know, meet with a teacher, work with them, meet with the principal, the instructional coach, you know, whatever they need. And then this is just a little FYI. Um, we were curious after the first semester report cards came out. I was thinking, I wonder how, what does our grade distribution look like in terms of the A's, B's, C's, D's, F's from first semester of last school year to first semester of this school year. So you can see here the, the lighter blue color is last school year, darker blue is this school year. Not a, not a huge difference, but slight uptick in A, slight uptick in F. Um, but yeah, it's not good or bad. I just thought I'd share that information with you because people will make their assumptions like it's so hard to get an A. Like, well, is it? So, you know, you hear things. So I just wanted to share that with you and I look forward to running this report again at the end of the school year, just so we're aware of, of what has happened. So that's the end of my updates. So questions. Logan? It all just seems like such a good plan and a really fresh approach to the grading. And I just hope it goes really smoothly for you all and uh, getting everybody on board. Thank, Thank you. you. Ms. Vasquez? Yeah, uh, really good presentation as always. You know, you're always very thorough, you're always very. You touch up, you, you dot your I's, you cross your T's. So I love that. Okay, one of the only things that I huh? control what we can. I know, exactly, exactly, exactly. No, the only question that I have really is that, I mean, it's 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 very, um, very self-explanatory. You can see, you know, what's happening. And we know that in order for, for, for their change is always good, okay? And, you know, and we it comes with, you know, it's quirks, it's whatever. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's going to be something that it's going to be better to um to show what the kids exactly 
learn. They really do know, not based on the standardized test, based on their knowledge of the subject matter or whatever it's happening. Okay, so I think I'm really for the the this type of of grading system. Okay, if I was still teaching, but anyway, I was just want to asking, uh, how long does uh, the the synergy, the legacy grade book will will it be? Well, when will it it'll become obsolete? Yeah, they don't, they haven't given us a sunset date. So I'll find out, but it, it, it's at least going through next school year. At least more complicated if they're yeah. not. And I know that because like you said, they're not, if they're come, if, if something comes up and, uh, you know, and, and it has to be fixed on the legacy, they're not going to do it. So, so it's kind of like, you know, so it, in, in, at one point it's going to be in a year, two, three, four, year, whatever, you know, it'll become completely obsolete and the other one will be the one that will come in. And for me, I think that the sooner that happens, I think the better it is for the teachers, you know, because, you know, you know how we are, you know, you know how teachers are. We, you know, we get used to something and we want to continue with it and continue and not really. And we have a lot of teachers that don't like the change, you know, and that they, that they will use the latter, you know, just because it's easier for them, you know, when really this one would be the better choice if they really put in the time to, you know, to, to learn it and to really grasp, you know, the, the wholeness of it, you know, so, but anyway, but thank you. And luckily that data, like I said, it'll be in both. So, uh -huh. so they don't have to enter it twice. If they enter it in old, legacy, it'll be in the new yeah. one. I'll get, and, and yeah. either one for next. Either one would be great. But, but again, like I said, it will be obsolete at some point. You know, and that's what teachers need to get into their head, you know, that this is going to end, you know, so you need to really focus on learning and and maneuvering, you know, through the through the through the one that we have now, because that's the one we're going to use. That's the one that's going to stay. And, you know, thank you. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. Mr. Ramirez. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, sir. Well, first, I want to say that I appreciate Ms. Vasquez's comments because it just goes to show that. Your insight as a teacher is very valuable to this governing board. And I, I really like that a lot. I appreciate it because, you know, I worked with you and I also worked at the high school. But as you had mentioned earlier, we were there and had seen the progress of all of this. But uh, you answered a few of my questions, by the way, already. Okay. I started to mention, you know, I probably asked you about the grading system and the whole algorithm that I had mentioned when we were in that whole spiel over there at the high school at the Performing Arts Center, I pack, so, but it kind of leaves me wondering, this assessment that, that, it leaves me wondering about what the teachers told me, some of them anyway, about how they adapted to this, to power law, and how they only would give like one assessment so that it wouldn't be heavy handed at the end of the semester, and I'm sure you appreciate that. I'm sure the whole admin appreciates that, you know, when they adapt to make things really good for the kids. It goes to show how clever they are. And yeah. like in Ms. Vasco, I mean, I, I really am concerned about the teachers. I'm, as everybody knows, I'm a real pro teacher. I've always said it since I arrived, and I'll always be that way as a governing board member. But well, getting away from that, the more important stuff, I still worry that this will restrict the amount of assessments until we do something about it. Now you said, we don't want to do it this year, and I understand the reasons behind it, but do you have plans of changing that so that they can give more assessments? So a lot of the teachers, our law actually is not bad for every set of standards. It works really well with language standards because it's over time when students are developing, it responds really well to growth. You're saying the nature of subjects could yes. vary this. So social study standards, those are the ones that we've had the most challenge with. And I mean, I can't say this officially, but I can go and ask them because most of the social studies teams on the task force, they're not necessarily just administering one assessment. They have, you know, the student trackers that we're talking about. Students are often taking multiple assessments but then the teachers updating that assignment column in the grade book as they complete the new assessment. So the student on their tracker has that record of their history with that standard. Does that make sense? And so they're seeing their most recent now in the grade book. So the students still have the multiple opportunities, um, but that's just the way 
I know most of the social studies department has maneuvered that. And then if there were two assignments in the grade book, power law is not, power law is only enabled if there's three assignments for one standard. So if you do a second assignment for a standard, that new one will override the first one. So often they would do the second assignment for the reassessment opportunity if a student reassessed. Now that one would replace the student's proficiency level. And if they didn't reassess, then the original stood. So I know it's kind of weird to talk without having an example, but they did figure out how to make it work because they are resourceful. And similar to you, I support our teachers and we worked with Every, every teacher who said, oh, I'm having you know a struggle with this, we would sit with them and say, tell us about your assessments, tell us about what you're thinking that you wanna put in there. Um, and so our plan is to move over next year that they would, we'd be using decaying average, but at this point, most teachers have their systems for how they're making this work for this school year. It's nice to hear. It's nice to hear you guys respect them that way and don't shove stuff down their throat, you know, which is cool. Um, you're talking about the let's see here the student trackers that's a good segue because I wanted to mention how our admin you know we often say well we have all these new administrators you know running the schools but these guys bring you know they're not neophytes they bring a wealth of experience to the table you know and so I wanted to commend the principals because you guys know how all this works with the trackers and you have your own ways, but they're sort of similar, but a little different depending on your style, getting the kids to track themselves. I remember Bethany talking to me about, you know, how they would use the computers to track their thing. You know, we did our paper when we were there, mm -hmm. at least when I was there, you were, mm -hmm. were there, you were there longer. So I don't know if you did on the computer or not later on, the kids did, mm -hmm. but they would track their learning. I remember you guys getting us to do that. I appreciate it, by the way, because it made me a better teacher for it. So, but the principals, giving back to them, hats off to you guys because you bring a wealth of experience. Yeah. From Sawarita, I'm sure, you know, for getting the kids to track their own learning. So I think it's really cool because I think it's really important, not only for, you know, their education in high school, but for them to start to learn what it's like, that, you know, in the future, as you had mentioned, that's one of our standards, too, to prepare them. Such a thing. If you, am I allowed to com yeah, sure. comment? Go right ahead, Megan. Um, one of the things that I really like about using trackers is that the student is doing that because our grade book is one directional. It's totally controlled by the teacher, and that then sent. That's why kids say, "Why'd you give me that that grade?" Right? <laughs> why didn't you know I got this? But when they have the tracker, you know, they're able to see where they're at, how am I doing, look at their trends, instead of only relying on that digital grade book. That's, that's one of the things that's really powerful about the tracker, you know, and the student knowing, because whatever they go to next, there's not going to be a teacher there saying, oh, you got a four, then a three, and then a two. You know, they have to know how they're doing. So, I, yeah, I appreciate that comment about the trackers. Good, young lady. So, um, yeah, you know, the... I want to say that one of your greatest strengths, by the way, you know, in, in the TLA is that with us, I'm sure that Ms. Vasquez would vouch for me too, is that you always gave us, you didn't try to shove this stuff down our throats, you know, because I'm sure all of us in this room have worked for an administrator who tried to shove things down our throats and say, this is the way it is and that's the way it has to be. And so I think it's one of your greatest strengths, by the way. And I liked it because I, I always felt like I could I could adapt and do what was right for the kids, which is the most important thing. It makes me think about Mr. Shadler one time. We, a little story, we got off the bus late at night because he used to coach cross country and I coached chess. And so we get we got off like 1230 at night. We had to wait for kids, you know, parents that pick up their kids. And we're like, come on in the morning, you know. Yeah. Tomorrow morning, and I remember Steve saying, and God, tomorrow, now they're going to, the admin's going to throw all this stuff at us. And where do they think we have the time for such a thing? <laughs> you know, and, and so uh, I think sometimes. I shove anything down my staff. <laughs> well, we used to feel the frustration of it because like we thought they're trying to make us fit a square peg in a round hole, you know? And so I don't see that anymore. And I, I think that's a big plus to this admin. But getting back to things before I get off too much on a tangent. Um, Let's see here. Uh, the new grading book 
what kind of feedback you were talking about feedback what kind of feedback yeah. have we gotten from the teachers well, the majority yeah, the majority has been positive that they really appreciate how it lines up um it's easier to see all of their standards in one page and they can filter by standard in the legacy grade book really easy to enter your grades on the wrong side of the grade book because they could see the traditional grade book was still visible which then if you enter that your grades don't they're not counting for anything but you have to be on the standards tab and it was just it's one of those newbie mistakes when it's a new program um, and so that's what's really nice is you can't make that mistake in the new grade book there's color coding the teachers can customize what their screen looks like so if you want to see their overall grade, but you don't, you can hide it, you can see it, uh, you could just see their last name, you could see first and last name. So it's nice, like the different columns, you can filter what you want to see in the grade book. Okay. Um, just some positives here. I really like the Synergy uh, updates, the Synergy Sense updates. I like the training that you had mentioned. And like Ms. Vasquez said, you're always so well prepared making some Thank you. We really appreciate that up here. And thank you for being on the tender, loving administration, the PLA. <laughs> I like that. You know, it's, I really appreciate your comment about, about our TLA team because we, we work really hard to be a support role. Um, and that's challenging when we want consistency for kids because sometimes that's an inconvenience for adults, us included everyone in here and that's what gets hard that's when things are perceived as shoving things down someone's throat because we want consistency for our students so it's a really fine balance so i just appreciate your observation of that and thank you mr president thank you well being a biology teacher if i heard of radioactive decay uh <laughs> tooth decay when did this decaying average yeah. when did this appear <laughs> you do, right yeah, probably ask a statistician or Mr. Kanoi, resident. Our math teacher should know that. It's all right. <laughs> I know it is a weird name. I was wondering if anyone was going to ask. Like, DK and average. Like, hey, yeah, why? Yeah, yeah. Uh, because the old, the older stuff's like you know fizzling out. I guess. No. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's part of your presentation when a teacher puts in a grade, a grade, a grade. It's only the final grade that counts. Correct. With well, with the King average, those anything that's entered is going to count. Okay. It's just that the, the what was entered earlier is going to be decayed. It will have a lower weight. I thought with uh, standard based uh, grading that you couldn't weight uh, projects or assignments. Right. You don't want to do that. So within, let me see. I put. Up, am I allowed to show pictures? Yes. Okay. So this is a what the new grade book looks like. So, um, and mind you, this is power law that you're seeing right now, okay? But if you look from, from right, the, this one's set up where the teacher has it organized. You can organize your assignments, um, newest to more recent, or, you know, you know, oldest to more recent. This one you're seeing September 1st on your right. Uh, right, and then August, and then an August date, and then you see the standard score for this is a high school standard. Um, that darker blue column, mm -hmm. this is the overall standard proficiency level. So this student had a two, three, three, and then it's coming out at a two here, and and this is rounded. But the the, the teacher entering this. This is considered learning evidence. So wouldn't it be like a practice assignment already? So our teachers are entering learning evidence and anything that goes in here is going to count, but that's why the aggregation method is so important because we wanna select one that's going to count the more recent evidence heavier than what was you know, earlier. That's why you see the student who on, August 18th had a three, August 24th had a three, but then November 1st was at a two. That's why you see their blue column is at a two because that more recent is counting. So yeah, it, it's always that the more recent will count more, but it's not necessarily just that brand new score is now the standard proficiency level. And then the any, the no evidence, does that go in as a zero? Eventually? 
Okay, and that's averaged in uh, for the over. Yeah. So this NE, you see the NE right here? This is counting as a zero. And in our high school, you take the standard proficiency levels, you average those, and if there's a zero, that's it's going to hurt the overall grade because if the student has four standards, right, and a four, 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 and a zero, that's going to bring that grade down. So that's where the the zero comes into play. Now I'm wondering at the at the end of the semester, with, if they have a, a lot of NEs, does it come out? Average out to a one, the student is retained. How does that work? Right. That's going to, the retention is all going to depend on the student. So we don't have an automatic formula of like an F, because at the high school, anything below, yeah, it, something at a one is going to be an F, but there's not automatic retention. We haven't even touched retention with this. It would be the same looking at the student. And if there's no evidence, that's going to factor into the conversation. But I would assume that other factors with the student's life are also going to be in that conversation. Okay. Go ahead, Steve. It's helpful, Mr. Beach. Um, we have a retention procedure that, that from kindergarten through uh, Typically, it happens in elementary level, um, but you know it applies. I've, I've seen it up into middle school, and the process typically starts in October, where the teacher identifies it for whatever reason um, they think this child is going to potentially be retained by the end of the year. So it requires them to notify the parents early in that first semester. We start a student study team, all sorts of procedures. The grade by the end, when the final decision is made, I would argue, I guess the grade has relatively little to do with the final decision. It's not. You, know, you got this score, you get retained or you pass. And when you get to high school, it makes that a fail, you know, an F is no credit. But in terms of retention, it's the whole picture. Look at the student's attendance, the age of the student, you know, also how many were they absent for six months because they were in the hospital, or were they, you know, there's all kinds of um, other factors that go in besides just the grade when you're talking about retention. I don't think in high school with summer school, like how, how would that be addressed? Was, uh... I think it's just the same thing that they had no credit so that they would have make up that credit. Up so it's like a credit recovery over them. And then just going back, I think this is going to, to lend itself up to, to having more um, yeah. that for SST conversations of whether a student needs to be retained or not. This is much more valuable than just one letter grade saying because now you have the whole standards base of what their ability is. Well, what they are lacking in is when you drill down. That's what it's Another wondering was <clears throat> they passed uh, six out of 10 standards. Now they just go for the four standards in summer school to complete that instead of taking the traditional way, the whole course, the whole half. They're not there yet, but yes, <laughs> that's what we want. Because well, yeah, why would a student you're, you're retain thinking, it? As a teacher, you're thinking. Yeah, that's yeah, as a teacher. And, and, that, exactly what and as a parent too, if my child uh, already mastered or whatever has threes or fours and, and and these standards, you know, then why would he have to take those back over? It would only take the ones that, that he's lacking. You know? I do have one more question. Uh, with our special ed population is, are the assessments uh, modified and are the rubrics modified for them? So the, it would go back to what's on the IEP. And so just as in our, our system from before, the same, the same would apply there. The, um, our scales have not been modified because we want the student to reach the grade level standard, and then that's where their accommodation or modification would come in to support them there. So the teacher would determine this is a four, this is a three, this is a two. Base and with the model. and with the resource teacher and the case manager. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's according to their IEP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard to say because every kid's IEP could be different to the goals of the subject area. So what an observation at the junior high uh, kid was taking an assessment on the computer. I was just wondering as a special ed, uh, when they went on that assessment, if that assessment was modified for their IEP. Oh, yeah. I don't know. if it, Like for that specific student, I'm not sure. And it would probably depend on what system are they using, you know, and the different features. Because the one product that we have, Newzella, you can customize the Lexile level that you're assigning a passage to. So if you want the student to read something about science, but you don't want the reading level, you know, to distort their knowledge, then we can adjust that. And so that's what it's hard for me to say if, for that student if that was adjusted, because it'll depend on 
what was the exact product and the students' needs. Maybe that's a question you could ask the teachers if they're doing that, if the assessments are aligned to their standards or aligned to their. Uh, I'm sure. Definitely. Uh, that's about it. We need to move on. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Megan. Thank, thank you. Questions. Was it the piñata last Saturday or what? Yeah, it was a dance injury. Okay. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I sprained it. Yeah. Next week, I hope to have it off. I hope so because yeah. it's ACT and I got to move fast. <laughs> no, you don't realize how much you you use a hand until you lose. So you don't have it anymore. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Speedy recovery. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Subject D, teacher retirement update. Mr. Verdugo. Thank you. So this was a screen by the teacher tonight uh, to discuss this, but uh, I had a conversation with him and asking for um, as far as the uh, retirement update. His question was uh, of experience for uh, returning teachers or um, like when we hire a new teacher. So, for instance, this year we have quite a few teachers retiring, but say Ms. Vasquez decided to leave the board um, and come back to be a math teacher, um, we would probably want to exceed that she's a high quality math teacher. Um, and the policy gives me that flexibility already. And, and so I try to explain to Mr. Kramer that we don't need to modify our policy, we just need to follow our policy. And it gives me as a superintendent to attract uh, and retain a teacher like Ms. Vasquez, bring her back out of retirement for her 28 years of experience. Um, and all I would need to do is just notify the board that the board would then approve it just like they would any other contract. Um, because I think as we start to look at the teacher shortage, um, I think we're going to have to come back with the ability to offer those additional years um, to keep our highly qualified, highly um, exceptional teachers. Um, and so we already have it in our policy. And so I, I wanted to share with, with the board that it is already in there um, that allows me for a, somebody reemployed or even coming from any, another district. If we know that to be competitive, um, that we have a, an employee from another district that we want to offer 18 years because they've been teaching 18 years because they are a high quality and a highly competitive content area that we can do that and bring that to the board. Um, so I just wanted to, to give the board a heads up that as we are trying to, to fight for quality teachers that this is probably going to happen more often than not. And so I, but I didn't want to adjust the policy because I think Mr. Kramer was, was thinking that we could link it and say um, teachers from our district uh, but if they're not in a, in a highly competitive area, um, it may not be in our best interest to do that. It may, and I think that's the, the flexibility we need to have is that we want to bring back our quality teachers. Uh, not that all of them are not going, but just at certain levels that, you know, that they're there. We want to be able to bring them back. So uh, if I can answer any questions. At this point. No questions. I think keeping the policy the way it is, and then you have always brought to the board reason to go off the chart totally agree totally agree i think that it's you know it's there already and it gives you that opportunity to make that change if it, if you feel that that's you know that that's uh what we need to retain that particular teacher so i think it's perfect the way it is no, you made it crystal clear thank you yeah i think it, it gives you uh, leeway for teacher retention and it's so important with the way we're teaching up here with this standard-based learning, with this personalized learning. When we lose a teacher, we lose that knowledge. So it's so important that uh, we have that opportunity to offer that. And uh, yeah, it, and it can make us competitive. You know, I'm down there because they're paying a little more. Well, go see Mr. Verdugo. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's exactly what it was. And I appreciate it, Mr. Kramer's thoughts of bringing it forward because I think it is important for people to know that we have that ability, um, especially we have quite a few teachers retiring this year. And when we have that conversation that we want to bring you back, and we'll, instead of bringing you back at step 11, we'll bring you back at your current salary because we want to keep you. And, and uh, I think that, again, it's, it's going to help us be competitive and retain some of our teachers. Thank you, Mr. Redoux. 
All right, moving along. Subject E, superintendent's report. Right, uh, I got you. Thank you. Uh, actually, I'd like to uh, invite uh, Mr. Kenoyba to grab the trophy. Um, and uh, 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 this is part of the superintendent's report. Uh, the district office won the walking challenge. So, Mr. Gobbles, congratulations on your status. God bless. Yes. Yeah, it is. Nice. So I, I, I we were going to do it before the, the movie, but I figured it would be great to have that. Yeah. <laughs> we don't get to get trophies very often. So, yeah. um, to just update the board, you did receive uh, the survey results uh, from the cell phone lenses. <laughs> I was going to play also Sprach Zaratustra for him. <laughs> yeah, for his trophy, but I, I wasn't fast enough. Can you give that to the principal, please? <laughs> yeah. Thank you. But um, again, I, I did share the results. It took us a little bit because we used a, a Google that would allow us to disaggregate the data as easily as we wanted to. So um, we were able to get a lot of the information that Andy and, and her team for to share with the board. But what it did is it pushed our meeting with the committee until tomorrow. So I don't really have anything to report tonight uh, from the feedback other than that uh, you got received all that data, which is very interesting. You can look at it, um, but we're going to discuss that tomorrow with the cell phone committee, and then we'll bring that back at our next board meeting um, with an updated possible recommendation um, in April for any modifications to the current policy. So I just wanted to share that with the board. Um, also, we wanted to share with the board that um, we will be um, working with my team, uh, Ms. Brown and I, uh, looking at um, organizing our override committee because it is time for us to uh, place on the override for 2024 uh, election cycle um, to update our continue override if the committee chooses to. I can't say that, that and if the board would support that. So we'll be starting a superintendent's override committee um, in the next few weeks so that we can start that process so that we can, at the end of May, bring back a recommendation to the board uh, because we have one more year before it begins to um, move down. So the percentage moves down. Um, and so we always go early so that we can have that continuation. And so I wanted to notify the board that we'll be uh, organizing the committee uh, getting that and have a recommendation to the board by the end of May. So, um, and then I wanted to thank the, the TLA office and all of the school sites uh, for um, hosting a visit from Montana. Uh, we had a, a large delegation from Montana to come and visit our school sites. Um, again, nothing but positive comments of the delegation that, that came to visit. Again, uh, showcasing all the things that we're doing within our district of supervised learning. Another compliment, and thanks Mr. Shadler and his team for organizing that, but it was great to, to see a large group here visiting all of our school sites. Thank you. Thank you. Finally, board members for Ms. Fogan. Thank you. Um, you know, this is the time of year when time just goes like that. All of a sudden, you know, we're at the end of the school year. So, I mean, I recently got to attend the Future Chefs competition, which is always a highlight. Congratulations to the winner. And we had Love of Reading Week, which I truly enjoy getting to go out to the sites and read. And I want to thank all the principals for really good principals' reports. Thank you. Same thing. Thank you. Everything that with that's been going on has been great. I love the principals' reports. I love the pictures of the of the kiddos and all the new things that are happening in the new, you know, the you know, just goes to show you that, you know the quality of stuff that our our principals are bringing in to our schools, you know, because of their experiences, you know, there's so many other little clubs and little things that are happening that you're like, oh my God, okay, really look at this, it's coming back, you know, and so I just think it's great, you know, congratulations to the people that, that won the chefs things and stuff. Um, our athletes, I mean, look at all of the awards that, that, that we're receiving with all of our kids 
you know, such great things that they're doing and, you know, and principals, thank you so much for everything that you do, everybody. I mean, we're, we're a team, everybody from the offices to secretaries to everybody. Thank you so much for everything you do, TLA. Tender loving care, huh? I think <laughs> TLC or whatever, you know, but, you know, but it, you guys work so, so hard. And, and when things like this happen, we can see all the hard work that goes into what you guys do. So you are very much appreciated. Thank you so, so very much for everything that you guys do. And let's uh, another let, let, let's go at it, you know, full force because we only have nine weeks left. And we're done. You know, it's uh, unbelievable. But yeah, and yes, I do want to go and visit the the the, <laughs> the building sites because I think that's awesome. But anyway, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Ramirez. Yeah, um, thank you, sir. Well, I explained to the superintendent and Mr. Chavez already that I can be there at the, the future chefs things because we had grades due that week, and so I'm sorry. Uh, the reason I mention it again is because the rest of you didn't hear. So I just want to let the governing board know we can be there because of that reason. We had grades due that week. So just I was overwhelmed with work. Well, that's worth to everybody. Okay. The other thing I wanted to talk about was I wanted to commend the admin, all the principals for being strict when it comes to discipline because I was reading some of those discipline reports and I saw how Somebody tried to make some really tough decisions, and I want to tell you that I appreciate that. As you guys know, I'm very old school, and you've heard of the adages like spare the rod, spoil the child. You know, I believe in those things. I believe you have to be strict, just like you, you're a parent. You have to do that as a parent. You know, you have to, you want to be loving, but at the same time, you want to be firm. I, I appreciate you guys doing that. That's administrators because it's not always easy because of course you're always going to combat the parents right and you're always going to contend with criticism as well and that's not easy when you're trying to run a school so I wanted to commend all of you for that I'm sure you heard it I throw this one out there for Mr. Shadley and I'm, I must be cruel to be kind that's a Shakespearean one let's go way back <laughs> so thanks for all that you guys do that's it. Thank you, sir. Yeah, pretty much everything they said. Uh, we're down to our last nine weeks. I know as a teacher, administrators, we're like, man, we're almost there. It's like <laughs> counting the weeks. But we do have those high stake tests coming up. So uh, let's fight, fight through what we got. Uh, a couple in April, May. No, April. We're all done with the state tests. And just finish strong. This is the hardest part of the year right now. When we want to sort of back off, we can. So, uh, I'm sending you good vibes and strength. So let's finish off the good uh, school year on a good note. That's all I have. Okie dokie. Let's go with uh, subject A, release of contract for Mr. Armando Alacoz. Uh, let's go discussion. Thank you. Um, uh, recommendation uh, you received from the principal, but as a notification, uh, that Mr. Lima has some help in for the recommendation to be released, as well as we need to release it. Discussion? Ms. Moby? Okay. Motion to release Mr. Armando Alacón from his 2023-2024 contract and waive liquidated damages in the amount of 1000 so moved. Second. Now, is there any discussion? Ms. Fobin? You know, we have policy. It fits into the policy. Ms. Vasquez? Uh, same thing. You know, this um, uh, this person is having really, really bad um, um, medical issues. And uh, and I think that he's, I think he's bedridden, right? I think he hasn't even come back or anything. And he's, in, he's a very young person. He's really good at what he does and stuff, but he's had, you know, uh, issues. And uh, I think it should be, uh, we should let him off his, con uh, you know, let him go of his contract and waive the liquidation damages, I think. Mr. Ramirez? Very strong. I have nothing to say. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Is there a second on that? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. All right. 
Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say nay. And that's an aye for me. No, no nays. Motion passes or motion carries. Moving along to subject B, 2024-25 contract language. I think I'd like to invite Ms. Cabrera. So this is the time of year before we start to issue contracts. Um, we can do with our attorneys, um, language changes or updates. Based on our legislation, if there's any. Uh, but it's that, that time of year, so we can do it with Good evening, board president. Um, thank you, board. With the contracts, um, we did review all of them with our lawyers. The only changes that were made with any of them were really to update them to our new board policies. Um, there were minor changes, um, semantics, but there was no other changes. Um, so the administrator, um, the teacher contract, everything is is very clear, and we're just making sure that everything is is followed by our board policies. So it was just a real, just a cleanup of the um, contracts, and that was all the changes that we made. Any questions? Moving. Well, we... No questions. Thank you. So there wasn't a lot of uh, changes or anything, the language, anything, anything like no, that. Not at this point. But basically, it's all you know, the same. You know, yeah. yeah. No, there no. were the ones only where you had to look for letters as opposed to the numbers. So it was a little kind of you know uh -huh. uh, minute details. But with the lawyer, um, after we cleaned it up, we sent it to the lawyer, and it was good. No, okay. yeah, very minimal. They changed the A's to the ones and just things like that. But it, there was no other changes to them. Thank you for the opportunity. And congratulations for your daughter. Oh, thank the little girl that talked is her daughter. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Very well spoken. Nine more weeks and then she's out of high school. It's like, oh, I know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Mirrors. I have nothing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, on the teacher contract uh, on policy 4 302, it's the lead buyback. Can we offer that? I, didn't, I was trying to find it. Um, so when there's, um, after 120 days, I believe, um, then you would be able to, that'll that'll come back to the teachers after five years. So once they've completed five years of service in our district, um, and then we do um, rate them as uh, $55 and then $75 for those who are, who are longer in longevity. Yes. Yeah. So this is really, I mean, commending the district. It is good. One of the very few districts that does do that. Um, so yeah, it's in the contract. Something that we uh, adjusted over, over time because we did have some some liability, so there has been uh, adjustments to it. But we do for that, and again, it's it's after five years. We do the seventy five. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too late. Okay. A uh, motion to approve the 2024-25 uh, certified administrator, teachers, certified professional staff, classified term, uh, an exempt appointment, and classified in indefinite term at will appointment contracts as presented. So moved. Second. And, uh, second. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Mm -hmm. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Now we're down to subject C, position description. Uh, so we have modified some of our positions uh, that we're going to be, now that we're able to we just uh, approve the uh, contract language, we're going to now um, approve some of our job descriptions. We currently have jobs, um, but we wanted to make sure that we uh, identify what people, a lot of times we will have. On duties as assigned, so we want to make sure that we try to clarify many of the the roles and positions that we have uh, on our uh, HR, so that we can again, place people properly, as well as make sure that their job fits with what their duties are. Um, so you can see uh, one of the positions there is the director of teaching and learning and assessment. So the reason that we are adjusting that is we're going to have a recommendation for. Mr. Chandler is, is retiring, uh, we know, and so we are not going to add a, a assistant superintendent position back. Um, we are shifting that into a director of PLA. Um, and so that uh, will then be shifted to a, a person in that area. And so we wanted to make sure that that job description fit with what their new role would be. Um, and then inside of the TLA, there's some additional um, instructional specialists that we wanted to make sure that we identified what their role responsibilities were as well. 
um, because as we shift, the recommendation will be um, for the coordinator to become the director. And so adding additional support for the, the director is going to be necessary. Um, so we added an additional position uh, in the TLA, which is the ELL and assessment coordination, uh, because that is a, a large uh, amount of time. So we wanted to make sure that we had that, that role. Again, it's still going to be a cost savings when you look at the final budget when we make that presentation. But we want to get ahead of this so that we can start uh, putting people in those positions. And then uh, we do respect that we already have that role, but we just wanted to clarify and clean that up a little bit um, because we, 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 did, we had a person at the high school that was filling that, but then we moved into an assistant principal position because of somebody, uh, uh, Jorge leaving at that time. So remember that we had to shift, but we haven't filled that role yet. So but we want to bring that back because we are having to do a reduction of course at the high school by removing one of the assistant principal positions. And so we're bringing this position back. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other position is the safety and security coordinator, um, which is, uh, you know, we've identified that need um, with uh, the board. Uh, and we've added all of our cameras in coordination with safety and security, emergency response. Um, we feel that that's with the investment that we've made with our um, cameras and security keyless entry, we're going to need an additional person to, to oversee that as well as um, monitoring the camera and making sure our security staff is well trained. And so we're adding that, that recommendation is to add that as well. So in the, in the, tonight is really just uh, allowing us to um, approve the job description so that we can start posting those positions and then filling the roles and reading those recommendations to the board. Mm -hmm. So, any questions on any of the job descriptions? Well, we I know I read them over, and they all seem to be in line with the discussions that we've had mm -hmm. and your recommendations. Absolutely, same thing. Same thing. Everything seems that you know it. It is where it's supposed to be. It's just you know those positions, so that those people that are hired for that know exactly what their duties are, and it doesn't have to say you know, duties as, you know, as a, you know, as needed or whatever. Now they know that that is one of their duties, not if it's needed. So I think it, I think it, it, it will, um, it will answer a lot of questions so that the, so that those employees or those people know exactly what their duty is and not, and, you know, not say like, oh, well, I didn't know I had to do this. <laughs> you know, what said happens, but anyway, but thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Ramirez. Yes, uh, the safety and uh, security coordinator. Do is this person just is this person just going to be looking at the cameras or no? So the, so they'll be in charge of the emergency response plans. You know all the things that that uh, we're going to have to remove some as uh, we're filling some of the things that Mr. Shadler did. Uh, Dr. Lender will be taking some of those things. I'll be taking some, and then the new director will be taking some of those things um, to fill that void and so this person is going to work with the security staff the security guards they'll be overseeing the security guards That's uh, they're going to replace dr lunderville on the southern arizona consortium uh emergency response um that she's the the chair of she'll with regard to that i'm as you know i'm very sensitive about alarmism yes so i don't i don't like when we said this whole community you know turn the whole community upside down just for that so I'm a little concerned that this is person going to have a lot of training and report. Yes. Yeah, and, and they're still good. They're still with you and yes, they're still going to they're still going to report to Dr. Lundell and myself. Um, so that so yeah. that or, so that is not going to change. So that there's still going to be a a uh, line of command. Mm -hmm. So that if there's questions of what's happening, it's still be. I would appreciate it if you put emphasis on that and us not having alarmism. Yeah, because so, we haven't had any of that lately, which is awesome. Yeah. It's been great. We don't need that, you know, for everybody's sake. Yeah, and and as you uh, know, that we're uh, the request from the board previously was to add security uh, additional security members at the high school. Right. So we are going to do that as well. That's great. That's um, awesome. That'll be part of our budget recommendation. But this, um, we felt that necessary that this person will then train the security staff as well as be able to move. For instance, if somebody's not. Uh, at Calabasas one day, we can move somebody from the high school just to, to cover and to just have more flexibility. And this person would then be in charge with the principals of site security as well as monitoring 
uh, cameras and, and those type of things. And so, mm -hmm. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah. With the safety and security coordinator, was that who who did that job before? We don't have one. Mm -hmm. So I thought Medissa was sort of she she does she oversees that. So it's going to remove some of the the responsibilities that she currently has. Mm -hmm. Um, she'll still go oversee it, uh, but she won't have the direct responsibility for it because right now she does all of her emergency response plan with the school site principal, and so this person would then take over that. Do we have a pay scale for this new position? Um, it will be. Um, so it, it... That is a grade 26. So 26, uh, grade 26 would start at 50,337. Um, and depending on the experience, we would move from there. Okay. Yeah. So it's a coordinator. It's a coordinator position on mm -hmm. our scale. Uh, so it's a 26, just like our uh, previous TLA coordinator position and uh, other coordinators. That's the starting scale. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Yep. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. so the, again, the recommendation is to approve the position description as uh, presented. Okay. Motion to approve the position descriptions for director of teaching. Learning and assessment, instructional specialist, instructional specialist assessment, mm -hmm. instructional specialist, instructional practice and technology, behavioral specialist, and safety and security coordinator as presented. So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. None. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, nays. Ayes have it. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. All right. Subject D, Santa Cruz Valley Unified School District Policies. Cell phone. Um, again, the I will talk to you in the future. And then we also have uh, with the head gear that will be doing. Clarify, we have that policy already in place, but um, I want to do it so the board will like to do so. Okay. Any discussion, Ms. Fulvian? None. Mr. Ramirez? No. Here. Subject E, propose and prioritize topics and possible dates and times for future board meetings. Google. Uh, thank you. Uh, the list is, is there. So if there's any additional, uh, we do have, again, the cell phone on April 9th. Um, and we will uh, yeah, be bringing any additional updates and policies. Okay. Ms. Bogan, you have anything to? I have nothing at this time. Thank you. I have nothing at this time either. Thank you. Oh, yeah, definitely. You guys got places uh, to be. Now is your time to exit. You know, you got your chance to watch the tournament. <laughs> That's right. I thought we were going to the exact session. Exec session. Wow. Thank you. Good night. Good job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get to I get to play Altos practice out of this stuff for you. Yeah, all that trophy. Hi, good to see you too. Yeah, we only had the cassette. Drive safely. Yeah, drive safe. Be careful. Yeah, don't get don't get hit this time. Yeah. Okay, subject A, uh, consent agenda approval of consent agenda. Any matter on the consent agenda will be removed from consent agenda and discussed as regular agenda item upon the request of any board member. Does anybody want to remove anything? No. Motion to approve consent agenda as presented. So moved. moved. Second. We've been a second. Any further discussion? No. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Motion carried. And at 644. 644. <laughs> 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 